Okay, I've been doing a lot of thinking about my Dremel tool here and I remember in yesterday's video I was complaining about the fact that the chuck was not true. And I was later looking, looking at this thing to see where it was made and it says made in Mexico. Well I don't care if it's made in Mexico or it's made in China or wherever it's made, I don't care. Uh, the Dremel Corporation, wherever they are, should not have allowed their name to go on something like this. And I was uh, getting madder and madder and madder and finally I thought, uh, you know what? The older Dremels, they, they didn't have a chuck, they had a collet and everything was sized to around an eighth of an inch. All the shanks were an eighth of an inch and then the tool part was on the other end of it. So then I got to thinking about the little accessory kit that came with this thing and uh, and it does have a collet. Now, now first of all I want to leave, I'm going to leave this on and I'm going to take a drill bit that, that I, I believe is, is true. Let's just test it here. Okay, it's a good thing I can cut out the dead spots because it took me a couple of minutes to find my piece of glass here. And to find out if something is, is true, you just take something that you know is relatively flat and you just roll your, your uh, shaft on it. And if, if it doesn't, if it's not bent, it should roll pretty good. And, and this is. There's nothing weird going on here. Okay. Now, we'll put it in backwards. Should be able to, I should be able to put it in far enough that the, uh, that the flutes will be past the place where the, where the jaw or teeth or whatever you call that part of the, of the chuck clamp down on. Okay, I just want it just on the end there. Okay. All right. No, I don't have a, a, a dialometer to put on the end of it, but I don't, I don't think we're going to need it. Let's just see what happens here. You, you know what, I'm going to change lenses. Okay, now, watch what's going to happen here now. That's terrible. That's that's got to be out. Oh. Well, I don't know what it's out. Thirty second of an inch, maybe. Maybe not quite that much. But that's terrible. All right, let's let's try the collet system. Okay, I guess you've picked up on the idea that the reason that I've clamped this. Uh, machine down to the table here so that it doesn't move out of the field of view especially with the macro lens all right now I'm going to assume that the shaft is straight uh, let's just see what happens when I run it here it, it looks pretty good now because it's threaded on the end it's pretty hard to tell all right now our call it uh, I believe this will go in here. And this should screw up on the end. Now we can take our tool and put it in. Okay. Now when we clamp it down, my, my experience with collets is that they are much better, usually. Alright, let's, uh, you know what, I Maybe I made a mistake there. Maybe I should have first done this. Wonder if it'll go in far enough. Uh, not really. Well, we'll just make sure that it's not clamping down on the flutes here. Okay, now is this going to be a little better? Looks better to me. Don't don't look out here. Look right where the where the drill bit is going, or the, where the shank of the drill bit is going into the 
call it there. That looks a lot better. Okay, now we'll try the other part here. There is very, very slight vibration there. There's more of a, a wearing noise, like a rubbing noise, than there is a vibrating noise. So that's good. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm kind of happy. But as for, as for this thing here, well, I won't trust it. Mind you, the reason I had this on is because I thought I could use it for, uh, you know, things like maybe, not that I'm going to do it, but like drilling out portholes or something like that. Okay. Well, let's carry on here. As long as we got this on, let's... Uh, try my little experiment here and see if I can take those pieces of sprue down with this. Uh, I have since come up with another idea. We'll talk about that later. Okay, so I have a friend who's into uh, wood carving and he uses something like this to uh, remove wood uh, from the piece he wants to carve. And uh, so that's what got me to thinking, well, maybe I could use it on plastic. Um, however, this turns so quick uh, even at its slowest speed, like it's uh, got a variable speed, it goes from, I guess, 35,000 RPM down to about 5,000. So I've got it turning at 5,000 RPM. And, you know, I haven't measured it, so I don't know, but I'm guessing it's about that much. And it it uh, can't be used to drill holes in plastic because it turns so fast, it melts the plastic, and consequently your hole is sort of not the size of the drill bit. Now, mind you, I was using that original chuck before, so it could be that part of the problem was the fact that the drill bit had so much wobble in it that it was, uh, you know, not true size at the end where the flutes were. Anyway, I'm rambling on here. Let's just try this, see how it goes. It may or may not work. I have never tried it before. This, this bit here has never been used before. Um, I, I also have another idea, so I'm only going to do this partially here just to see how it goes. It's probably going to be throwing stuff all over. It might melt. I don't know. Here we go. I'm going to put on my stronger glasses and see if I can't get a little closer. That's actually working better than I thought it would. Well, I guess we can forget about only doing it partially. Take the tape off here. Okay, yeah, that, that removed it down pretty good. Probably if I was to practice at it, it would be a lot faster than using the file. Um, okay, now the other idea I had, well, I don't have anything left here to show it to you, but uh, give me a, I'll, I'll hook it up and I'll, I'll, I'll get it out and I'll show you what it is.
Okay, I've got a couple of really thin blade saws here. This is not the thinnest one, but I'm just thinking maybe I should use some new tape here. Anyway, uh, my, th my thinking was that if I was to hold, maybe I'll hold it like this, if I was to hold this down and it was just to write on the tape, it might not scratch the uh, bottom of the hull too badly. Yeah, that kind of works. But I've also got one like this. Okay, I think you get the idea. This this one here probably would have worked a lot better if I hadn't have already taken this this thing down so much. Got to get it on both pieces of tape here at the same time. So I don't want to be scratching the hull all over the place. Okay, yeah. All right. So so that was my other idea. Um now right right here, uh, we're pretty much in the middle of the hull here and, and nobody's going to see this anyway. So if I don't do a real good job here, it doesn't really matter. Like I say, nobody's going to see it, so what's the difference, right? Our hull had five of these things all together. This is the uh, fourth one from the bow. There's only one more to go and then we're at the stern. Now, I'm going to try this uh, blade right here, and I've got it turned around so that it cuts on the pull. Uh, sort of like a, I guess you call it a Japanese saw. I'm going to just hold it down here flat. here. Try it this way. I'm I can see where this system would work really well on something that was protruding up at least an eighth of an inch. Okay, I think we beat this to death. We are now at the very stern and I don't think my tape is going to help me very much right here. If anything, it might be a hindrance. Just take it off. and. Uh, And 
and or a fine. There's a few places here where I got to take the seam off yet. I think uh, those of you who were with me a lot down in the workshop, you know I was big with the scraper. Uh, when I was at the lathe, I liked to use the scraper rather than the gouge. I'm just wondering if maybe I can't just scrape that off. I'll readjust the camera here. Now our seam is a little bit hard to see here, and it's really not raised that much. It's not like there's a whole bunch of flashing sticking out of it or anything. I can just sort of feel it. And and this is that spot that we were just working at a, a minute ago. Um, Alright, so the idea is to sort of scrape along this along the seam with this rounded blade. That way it's not going to dig in on the sides. excuse is that because of the angle I'm at, it's hard to get it right on the seam. I may have to do this off camera and then we'll look at it after I've got it sanded down. Anyway, you, you get the idea. Just sort of scrape it off. It should work. I don't have a card scraper. Uh, that, But then of course the card scraper might dig in somewhere else where it's not supposed to as well. Every time I do this I realize just how big this hull is. Okay, just a damp rag here to get the powder off. I do not want to give you the wrong impression thinking that everything went great when I used this rounded blade. It didn't. I very soon realized it wasn't going to work and I switched to the flat blade and I treated it like a card scraper. Now I can't believe that I don't have a card scraper down in my workshop because I've got everything else. Almost. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty good here. I can, I can see all of them. I can sort of feel this one. I can kind of feel this one. I can't feel this one. I can't feel this one or this one. Uh, we pretty much got it here. What I did was, after I went over it with the blade and scraped off the the, uh, the seam, I took the medium sanding disc or sanding stick, and I you know went like this. Then I took the fine and did the same. Then I cut myself a little piece of thousand grit sandpaper here and went over the whole thing. I think we're ready to prime after we get the uh, the cross braces in. I don't know if you'd call them cross braces. I think in a canoe, isn't it called something like a fret or something? I'm not sure. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're not making a canoe. Although, you know what? These things are shaped a lot like a canoe, if you ever noticed. Uh, well, not this one so much. It's got that bulge on the side, but anyway. Yeah, they're very, very canoe shaped so that they can, uh, I guess, be pushed through the water with the least amount of needed power. Anyway, I think that's it for today, folks. And uh, all being well, we'll see you tomorrow. And we'll try and get these things in. Thanks for watching.